In the previous video, we saw that if there is no net charge enclosed within a closed surface, the net flux over the surface is zero. Now, let us see what happens if there is some net charge inside a closed surface and we will figure out what the net flux over that surface is. So, let us begin with the simplest surface. We have a sphere. Uh, remember, this is a 3D sphere, not a circle. And there is a charge Q placed at the center of the sphere and the radius of the sphere is R. Then we know that the electric field of this uh, electric field due to charge Q is uniform and the electric field at the surface of the sphere is given by KQ over R square. The electric field line is acting out radially at every point on the sphere. And so, my electric field lines at the surface of the sphere will be something of this sort. And this is my meaning. Now, I will divide the sphere into small surface elements. And at each point on the sphere, if I have this surface element at each point on the sphere, my dA is also acting out radially because that is the direction at which that is the perpendicular direction to every point on the sphere. So dA here is in this direction and similarly dA at every point on the sphere is going to act out perpendicularly. So we can say that for the sphere when the point charge is at the center, my dA and E are parallel. So my theta is 0 and cos theta is 1 and thus my flux through each of these elements d phi E so each element is given, uh, it is E dot dA and that essentially is equal to E dA. So the net flux through the sphere, which is equal to integral of d phi E's of the fluxes through each of the small elements is then given by integral E is K Q over R square and times dA. Now remember, electric field was uniform, K is constant, Q is constant, R square is constant, and so I can remove that from my integral, and I have KQ over R square integral dA, which is essentially the surface area of the sphere, and I get my phi E as KQ over R square times 4 pi R square, which is the surface area of a sphere. This R square, R square cancels out, gives me k q times 4 pi. Now you know that k is essentially equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. So I will substitute that for my k times q times 4 pi and 4 pi cancels out and I get my flux is equal to q over epsilon 0 and this is the net flux through the sphere due to the charge q. Let us now imagine two other closed surfaces. Um, let me draw. And these are of some random geometry like this. So remember that these surfaces are also in 3D and they are closed surfaces. These surfaces I pick, let me call them S1 and S2 are closed surfaces such that they enclose my sphere completely and there is no other charge other than charge Q enclosed by the surfaces. Now, we said when we studied electric flux, we said that the electric flux through a surface is proportional to the number of electric field lines passing through that surface. And if there is no other charge Q inside these surfaces in this whole volume, then there is no place on which any of the electric field line starting from point Q is going to terminate. And what that means is that all the electric field lines starting from point Q necessarily have to pass through all the three surfaces. There is no other charge. So what I mean is if there was any other charge, then there was a chance that the electric field line would have terminated here and it would not have passed through the surface. But there is no other charge. And so each and every electric field line starting from Q crosses all the three surfaces. So what we can say from that is that the flux 
of the sphere is equal to the flux of S1 which is equal to the flux over S2, flux through S2 and all these three is equal to Q over epsilon 0 as we just proved. Now let us take one more thing and what we are trying to see is what happens so we just saw that the geometry does not matter and we are also going to see now that the position of Q inside this does not matter and so I will take some other surface let me say that I take this surface and this is again a closed surface I have a charge Q very close to one end of the surface then I can always imagine a very small sphere around that charge and this is an imaginary sphere say its radius here is r prime and then I can say that the flux the net flux through this imaginary sphere is so this is my imaginary sphere is equal to q over epsilon 0 there is no other charge enclosed by this surface so the net flux by the logic we developed above through the whole surface is also equal to q over epsilon 0. So that just proves that the geometry of the surface and the position of charge inside it does not matter. However, if I have two more charges inside and say I have a charge plus 2q and a charge minus 2q enclosed by the surface then what happens is that electric field lines starting from plus 2q terminate on minus 2q and assume that say if we say that there are some lines from plus 2q that are going out somewhere and they do not terminate on minus 2q then there has to be some other electric field line coming into the surface to terminate on minus 2q. Because remember when we were discussing electric field lines, we said that the number of electric field lines starting from a positive charge is proportional to the strength of the charge and the number of electric field lines terminating on a negative charge is proportional to the strength of the charge. And if both these charges are of the same strength, then the number of lines leaving this charge has to be equal to the number of lines terminating on this charge and that means that if all these lines are not terminating here, if some are going out, then we need some new lines coming inside to terminate on this charge. Or it is even possible that a line from 2q goes out and comes in again to terminate on minus 2q. However, the net effect of that is that there is no electric flux due to these two charges. And the only net electric flux that goes out of this surface is going to be due to the charge Q and it is equal to Q over epsilon 0. And so this is our Gauss law. What Gauss law says is that if I have a closed surface, so there are a couple of important points. One is you need to have a closed surface. If I have a closed surface, enclosing a net charge Q, then and the position of this charge and the geometry of this surface do not matter, then the net flux through the surface is given by Q over epsilon 0. And the second part that the Gauss law says is that if there is any charge, say Q prime, outside my enclosed surface, then this charge Q prime does not cause a net flux to the surface. Or in other words, the flux due to charge Q prime outside a surface is zero. And so all that happens is my net flux depends on net Q enclosed. So this is Gauss law for us and in the next video we will see how we can use Gauss law to make our electric field calculations get simple.